Hi everyone, welcome to Study Body Homeschooling. In today's session, we'll be seeing CBSE Class 10 English Chapter Boli, written by K. A. Abbas. So let's go into the story. Her name was Suleka, but since her childhood, everyone had been calling her Boli, the simpleton. So this story is about a girl named Suleka. From childhood, everybody used to call her Boli, the simpleton. Simpleton refers to a foolish person. So literally, Suleka was called as a foolish person, meaning Boli. She was the fourth daughter of Nambardar Ramlal. Nambardar refers to a revenue official. So Suleka, who is also called as Boli, which means foolish, she was the fourth daughter of Ramlal, who works in the revenue department. When she was 10 months old, she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain. So Suleka or Boli, when she was about 10 months old, she had fallen off from the cot. She fell off from the cot, from the bed. And because of that, her head got injured because of which there was some damage in her brain. That was why she remained a backward child and came to be known as Boli the simpleton. Since the fall from the bed when she was 10 months old, probably some part of her brain was damaged because of which her movements and thinking capacity could have been reduced. That's why people, um, she was very slow in her response. That's why people called her Boli or the foolish person. At birth, the child was very fair and pretty. But when she was two years old, she had an attack of smallpox. So when she was a, born as a baby, she was very fair and pretty. But the thing is, when she was two years old, she got smallpox attack. Only the eyes were saved. So it was a very severe attack. Only her eyes could be saved. But the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pock marks. So, when she got, uh, when she was two years old, she had, she was attacked by smallpox, which is caused by a virus. It was a deadly uh, disease way back in 80s and 70s. After the smallpox vaccination, it reduced. It was under control. But when Boli or um, Suleka, when she was a young girl, two years old, she got attacked by smallpox because of which there were deep marks on her body except for eyes her entire body was filled with pock marks pock marks refers to holes which are caused by the smallpox smallpox is like a pustule like thing or bubble like thing which is formed on the skin and after some time the skin uh, the, the bubble subsides or uh, oozes out but the mark remains this is known as pock marks so, her whole body was filled with pock marks caused by the smallpox. Little Suleka could not speak till she was 5. So, generally, generally kids start speaking by 2, 2.5, max by 3. So, uh, Suleka, till she was 5, she was not speaking. And when at last she learned to speak, she stammered. So, till 5, she was not speaking. And if, even if she started speaking... She was stammering, means her words were not coming out properly. There was a shake in her words that is known as stammering. The other children often made fun of her and mimicked her. So, other kids were very rude to her and they used to make fun of her. The way she spoke, they used to do the same thing. That is known as mimicking, just repeating what they say. As a result, she talked very little. She got probably inferiority complex because her friends mocked whenever she spoke. So she hardly spoke because to avoid any mockery by her friends. Ram Lal had seven children, three sons and four daughters. So totally Ram Lal had seven children, three sons and four daughters and she was the fourth daughter. And the youngest of them was Boli. So she is the last girl and the last child and the last fourth girl. It was a prosperous farmer's household and there was 
plenty to eat and drink so he was a prosperous a rich farmer who also works in the uh, revenue department as a numberdar which is a good post he was earning well and he was a farmer as well so food was surplus all the children except boli were healthy and strong so all the other six kids were healthy and strong the sons had been sent to the city to study in the schools and the and later in colleges the sons the three sons they have been sent to city to study and even colleges they attended in the city the sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges of the dot daughter daughters radha the eldest had already been married so when we are talking about the story radha her eldest daughter is already married the second daughter mangala's marriage had also been settled and when that was done ramlal would think of the third champa okay so first radha is already married mangala's has been fixed second daughter mangala's has been already fixed and third one their third daughter's name is champa and they are working on it working on finding a groom for champa so they were good looking healthy girls and it was not difficult to find by bride grooms for them so it was um, not very difficult for uh, ramlal to find boys for marriage for her girls radha was already married second daughter mangala engagement has been done her marriage has been fixed and then third champa they were looking for it and the fourth girl is boli or suleka but ramlal was worried about boli so now ramlal first three girls uh, somehow radha is married mangala's marriage is fixed champa will be married soon they are still looking for a groom or a uh, boy for marriage that's what bridegroom refers it's a boy so but ramlal was very much worried about boli because she had neither good looks nor intelligence so ramlal and family felt that boli had pock marks on her pock marks on her face which uh, caused because of smallpox and she was not very intelligent she was not speaking much and everybody called her foolish so ramlal was worried about the marriage of her fourth daughter suleka boli was 7 years old when mangala was married so mangala was a second daughter she was married when boli was 7 years old the same year a primary school for girls was opened in their village so that was the same year even a primary school opened in their village the tehsildar tehsildar refers to a revenue official of a uh, higher post even ramlal works in the revenue department his senior is tehsildar the tehsildar sahib came to perform its opening ceremony so even tehsildar did the opening ceremony of the school he said to ramlal as a revenue official you are the representative of the government in the village and so you must set an example to the villagers you must send your daughters to school now tehsildar is a senior of uh, namberdar uh, namberdar ramlal and so he said you know when the school primary school was opened when the tehsildar had come for the opening ceremony he said to ramlal ramlal you are also working in the revenue department which is a government thing so government has uh, started the primary school so it's very important for you to send your daughters to school that night when ramlal consulted his wife she cried are you crazy if girls go to school who will marry them now that day that night ramlal told to his wife you know that tehsildar sahab told to send daughters to our school then she was like crying you know are you mad will girls go to school who will marry them if they go to school but ramlal had not the courage to disobey the tehsildar so ramlal senior was tehsildar so he could not disobey his officer's words so he said you know at last his wife said i will tell you what to do send boli to school as it is there is little chance of her getting married with her ugly face and lack of sense but th- let the teachers at school worry about her so at last his wife is opening up there is already two girls are married of radha mangla now champa they will look for a bride groom and um, suleka or boli is there but her mom doesn't want to send champa she says i'll tell you what to do now uh, 
his wife said you know tell you what to do send boli to school let's not send champa let's send boli to school as it is there is little chance of her getting married as such you know there's no way she's going to get married with her ugly face and lack of sense let the teachers at school worry about her anyway she will not get married so what is the point in keeping it home you have to obey to your tehsilda let you send boli to school let's send her anyway what's point she will not get married anyway that's what her mom said the next day ramlal caught boli by the hand and said come with me i'll take you to school boli was frightened now he said you know next day uh, ramlal caught boli's hand or suleka's hand and said come we let's go to school boli was frightened she had no clue what school was she did not know what a school was like she remembered how a few days ago their old cow lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold so now they realized you know now she realized boli realized that she was really frightened she didn't know what school was and she remembered lakshmi her old cow being sent out of the home and after that she didn't come back home no no she shouted in terror and pulled her aunt away from father's grip now she she was really scared she thought some they are going to leave her somewhere just the way they left old cow lakshmi what's the matter with you you fool shouted ram lal i am only taking you to school then he told his wife let her wear some decent clothes today or else what will the teachers and the other school girls think of us when they see her now he says he pulled her hands he pulled her hands and says you know hey you fool stop i'm just taking you to school and he told his wife give her some decent clothes to wear otherwise what will teachers and other girls will think of us he is worried about his own pride new clothes had never been made for boli so far they never gave any new clothes for boli whatever her sisters wore since she was the last child it was like second hand whatever they wore it naturally came to her the old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her it actually happens in all houses whenever there is a second child of the same uh, gender the second one gets to wear the dresses worn by the first one no one cared to mend her washer clothes but today she was lucky to receive a clean dress which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fit at champa so now after long time she is getting to wear a nice dress which was champa's dress and it does it didn't champ it didn't fit champa anymore so they gave nicely clean dress to her she was even bathed so probably first time they are taking care of her and oil was rubbed into her dry matted hair matted refers to tangled hair if you don't comb your hair for a long time it just joins together form forming tangles or uh, it's very difficult to uh, make it straight it would have just crossed and formed a mat like appearance only then she did she begin to believe that she was being taken to a better place than her home so now all this while she was at home she had no clue what school was first time she was wearing cleanly washed dress they bathed her and oil was rubbed on her matted tangled hair so she was believe that she was she began to believe that definitely they are going to take to a better place when they reached the school the children were already in their classrooms ramlal had handed over his daughter to the headmistress so he went and gave suleka or boli to headmistress left alone the poor girl looked about her with fear laden eyes so now she was really scared she was she looked at her headmistress with lots of fear because first time she was going to school first in their old village there were several rooms and in each room girls like her squatted on mats reading from books or writing on slates headmistress asked boli to sit down in a corner in one of the classrooms so now uh, ramlal took his uh, daughter suleka or boli to the headmistress and she looked at the headmistress with fear there were lo- lots of rooms and each of these rooms girls were squatted squatted is sitting on heels on mats reading from books and writing on slates so headmistress asked boli to sit in a corner you know one of the classrooms boli did not know what exactly a school was like what happened there 
but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her own age present there she hoped that one of these girls might become her friend so boli had no clue what was what was school like because that's the first time the school had primary school had opened in her village her brothers used to study in the city colleges and in the city but they didn't have a school so first time she went and uh, she was so glad that so many girls of her age were present first time she is seeing so many girls of her own age and she was just hoping that she could find some friend there the lady teacher who was in the class was saying something on to the girls but boli could understand nothing so the lady teacher there was uh, saying something to the girls and boli did not understand anything she looked at the pictures on the wall the colors fascinated her the horse was brown just like the horse on which the tehsildar had come to visit her village their village so she she could not understand anything what her teacher said she just looked at the pictures but now she is able to relate with the pictures horse was brown in color just like tehsildar's horse which he had used to come to the village the goat was black just like the goat of their neighbor so their uh, suleka's uh, boli's neighbor also had a goat black goat and she saw the black goat picture there the parrot was green like the parrot she had seen in the mango orchard so she um, she saw a parrot just like green in color just like parrot that she sees in the mango farm and the cow was just like their lakshmi she could see a picture of cow just a picture was just like the her cow which they named her lakshmi and boli noticed that the teacher was standing by her smiling at her what's your name little one the teacher asked bo 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 she could stammer no further than that she could not tell her mouth word or own name and she started stammering stammering refers to not speaking clearly then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood she kept her head down as she sat in her corner not daring to look up at the girls who she knew were still laughing at her so she was so upset that she could not even tell her name and she said bo 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 she could not tell her name properly she was filled with shame she was her tears were just running she was just crying with tears and she kept her head down she was very um, upset about it and she was thinking that you know maybe other girls were mocking at her when the school bell rang all the girls hurried out of the classroom so when the bell rang all the girls ran out of the classroom scurried us ran out of the classroom but boli did not to leave her corner even after the bell rang she did not leave her corner her her place her head still lowered she kept on sobbing so even after all the girls had left and the bell had rung the girl was still had kept her head low and she was still crying sobbing refers to crying boli the teacher's voice was so soft and soothing so her teacher said in a very soft voice boli in all her life she had never been called like that it touched her heart so the teacher called her name so soft that nobody had called her so softly and she felt so good she it really touched her heart she felt very comfortable get up said the teacher it was not a command but just a friendly suggestion the teacher didn't even command to get up she said in a very friendly and a polite manner boli got up now tell me your name her teacher says sweat broke out over her whole body now again as her teacher said tell me your name again she started sweating she thought you know maybe i could not tell the name properly would her stammering tongue again disgrace her why is she sweating again she stands you know will i be able to tell it's a big thing for her even to tell her name for the sake of this kind woman however she decided to make an effort so because of this kind lovely teacher she said you know let me try she had such a soothing voice she would not laugh at her so she was somehow convinced that no matter what teacher is not going to laugh at me bo 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 she began to stammer well done well done the teacher encouraged her 
if it was somebody else they would have started laughing just like the other girls bo 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 but the teacher was like and started encouraging well done well done come on now the full name bo bo boli at last she was able to say it and felt relieved as if it was a great achievement so finally with teacher's teacher's encouragement she was to tell her she was able to tell her name as boli and she felt really good about it she felt it was a great achievement for her to tell her name well then the teacher patted her affectionately and said put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone else she says you know just take the fear out of your heart fear is the only thing which is making you behave the way you are take the fear out and you will be able to speak like everyone else she said boli looked up as if to ask really she just looked up to ask you know as if you know she could not believe she she didn't say really but she looked up to ask you know as if it felt you know really that's what her reaction was yes yes it will be very easy you just come to school every day will you come oh, her teacher says will you come to school every day boli nodded no say it aloud she says just say it loudly yes and boli herself was astonished that she had been able to say it so when she said s yes, she could not herself believe she was surprised astonished refers to surprise that she had spoken yes didn't i tell you now take this book her teacher gave now you take this book the book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color all colorful book colorful book of pictures dog cat goat horse parrot tiger and a cow just like lakshmi and with every picture was a word in big black letters so there was a teacher gave a book full of colorful pictures and below every picture there was a word written in big black letters in one month you will be able to read this book then i'll give you a bigger book then a still bigger one in time you will be more learned than anyone else in the village then no one will ever be able to laugh at you people will listen to you with respect and you will be able to speak without the slightest stammer understand now go home and come back early tomorrow morning so the teacher is a very encouraging teacher and she says now you take this book and go you will be able to finish it once you finish it i will give a bigger book than this and after you finish the bigger one i'll give you a still bigger one so that as you keep reading you will be the most learned person in this whole village then nobody will laugh at you once you are well learned they'll respect you okay and you will not be able to uh, uh, stammer you will be able to speak fluently understand now just go home and come that's what her teacher said she seems to be a very good teacher encouraging teacher boli felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the school house had blossomed into big red flowers her heart was throbbing with a new hope a new life for the first time in boli's life she felt so good about it as if you know village temple bells were ringing the trees were all blooming in into red flowers so she could feel all positive vibes she she was able to be very positive hopeful and uh, she was really looking forward to life for the first time thus the years passed so this way years went on the village became a small town so village became a small town the little primary school became a high school so when they started when boli was young it was a primary school now it has become a high school they were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton ginning mill the mail train began to stop at their railway station so so many developments had happened in our village what are the developments primary school became high school now there was a cinema theater where under a tin shed where people could watch cinema just like the movie theater malls they had a cinema theater for the first time and a cotton ginning mill Gin, ginning mill refers to industry basically so the village has developed into a 
town with industry where cotton seeds were separated from cotton separation of cotton fiber will take place and the seeds are separated out that's a gaining wheel so the village had improved now so many improvements were seen even that mail mail train began to stop at the railway station so it has become a very prominent town one night after dinner ramlal said to his wife then shall i accept bishambar's proposal so ramlal is uh, saying to his wife shall i ac accept bishambar's proposal so somebody's marriage proposal could be yes certainly his wife said his wife said no yes definitely boli will be lucky to get such a well to do bride groom a big shop house of his own and i hear several thousand in the bank moreover he is not asking for any dowry so now this proposal bishambar's proposal is for boli now her mom is her mother is saying oh certainly now father is confused whether should we go for should we accept bishambar's uh, proposal his wife is like boli will be very lucky to have such a well to do bride groom very uh, well off boy very rich family he has a big shop house he has he has lots of amount many thousands in the bank account moreover he is not asking for any dowry dowry refers to uh, a system where girls family has to give jewels money certain things to the boys house this is known as dowry that's right but he is not so young you know almost the same age as i am and he also limps moreover the children from his first wife are quite grown up so now the person bishambar they are looking for the proposal from bishambar bishambar is almost as old as boli's father still they are looking for a uh, for getting to marry her daughter boli to bishambar who is as old as boli's father he is not so young you know almost the same age as i am so bishambar is as old as boli's father still and he also limps so some problem with his legs that he is not able to walk straightly moreover the children from his first wife are quite grown up so bishambar is already married with the first wife and the first wife is kids are already grown up probably the first wife kids are as old as boli also still her mom is wanting to get boli married to bishambar so what does it matter his wife replied now his wife is not bothered boli's mother is not bothered that boli's could be husband bishambar is as old as her father 45 or 50 it is no great age for a man her mom says 45 or 50 it's not a great age for man we are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pock marks and her lack of sense if we don't accept the this proposal she may remain unmarried all her life so now mom is saying boli's mother you know what so what if he is aged 45 or 50 for a man it's okay she says he, she says you know we are lucky that uh, he bishambar is from another village otherwise he would have known about her pock marks all over body and her lack of sense and he would not have married good that he is from her another village and he doesn't know about her fully yes but i wonder what boli will say now her father is like you know what i don't know what boli will say for marrying a person as old as 45 50 years old as old as his father what will that witless one say she is dumb like she is like a dumb cow her mom is very ruthless and she says what will that witless wait witless refers to brainless say what does a brainless girl say she is like a dumb cow maybe you are right muttered ramlal now mom ramlal is convinced oh anyway you are right i think anyway she is not going to get married and uh, bishambar is there to marry what if he is old also he is from another village and he doesn't know about the pock marks on her face so it's okay in the other corner of the courtyard boli lay away corner caught listening to her parents whispered conversation so boli was hearing all this conversation all along bishambar not was a well to do grocer so bishambar nath is a prospective groom for boli he was a well to do grocer so he runs a grocery shop where day to day items are uh, sold so he is a well off grocer 
he came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the wedding so it wedding had started wedding celebrations had started so he came with big party of friends and relations for the wedding a brass band playing a popular tune from an indian film headed the procession so the wedding procession started with lots of music he is from a well to do family so he was spending a lot on the band band procession and celebrations with the bride groom riding a decorated horse he was coming on a horse ramlal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor he could not believe he had married off so many daughters but this one uh, boli uh, boli's uh, groom vishambhanath seemed to be very rich and he was spending so much money on his procession wedding procession to reach the uh, bride's home he had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding he thought you know he, they used to believe that boli would never get married now here she is getting married with such pomp and splendor with so much of money being spent and it looked great boli's elder sisters who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck so boli's other three sisters were there at the wedding they could not believe that you know her boli's her sister boli's wedding is happening with such grandeur when the auspicious moment came the priest said bring the bride so the priest said bring the bride for the mandap boli clad in a red silken bridal dress was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire so uh, according to hindu customs marriage happens before the fire so she was brought before the fire garland the bride one of his friends prompted bishambarnath so they said garland the bride the friends of bishambarnath told told him told the group the bride groom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds a woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face bishambar took a quick glance the garland remained poised in his hands the bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face so uh, one of bishambar's friends is garland her so uh, he, he was ready bishambar was ready to garland her a woman took a veil veil is like cloth which is covered for the bride they take it off and then do the garlanding so another lady took the veil or a cloth covering her face um, from boli and bishambar took a quick glance so have you seen her said bishambar to the friend next to him she has pock marks on her face so first time probably bishambar was seeing boli and she says you know she tells her friend his friend bishambar tells his friend there are marks on her face so what you are not young either so his friend says you know it's okay you are not also young you are also 40 50 years old maybe but if i am to marry her her father must give me 5000 rupees now after seeing her face now bishambar is like you know she has marks on her face his friends say so what you are also not young no you are also old fellow only and for this he say it's okay but i'll marry her but her father should give 5000 rupees ramlal went and placed his turban his honor at bishambar's feet do not humiliate me so take 2000 rupees so ramlal uh, took his turban out and put uh, under bishambar's feet saying that do not humiliate me uh, it's like you know i'm going down uh, it's like you know i i'm helpless please go ahead i only have 2000 rupees no 5000 or we go back keep your daughter now bishambar is very particular your daughter has four pot pock holes on her face i don't want to marry her if you want me to marry her give me 5000 i will otherwise i will go and you keep your daughter i'm not going to marry her be a little considerate please if you go back i can never show my face in the village and uh, boli's father ramlal says you know please be a little considerate you know if you go back i cannot show my face to anybody it's a big shame for me then out with 5000 so he says then definitely you have to give me 5000 tears streaming down his face ramlal went in opened the safe and counted the notes he placed the bundle at the bride groom's feet now he kept 5000 asked by Uh, uh, Bishambar at his feet. Namlal gave five thousand rupees and kept it under Bishambar's feet. On Bishambar's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. It's like victorious smile, as if you know he had achieved what he had gambled and won. Give me the garland, he announced. 
once again the veil was slipped back from the bride face so uh, once again the veil was slipped the veil was the cloth covering the face of the bride was taken off but this time her eyes were not downcast now this time her uh, eyes were not down she was looking up bolly was looking up looking straight at her prospective husband and in her eyes there was neither anger nor hate only cold contempt so uh, she was uh, first time when he lifted the wheel veil she was looking down but this time they lifted the veil she was looking up and she was looking straight into her husband's eyes and in her eyes they were she was not angry she was not hating it was like a cold look a cold straight forward look pishambar raised raised the garland to place it around the bri bride's neck neck but before he could do so bolly's hand struck out like a streak of lightning and the garland was flung into the fire so now he was ready to put the garland bishambar was ready to put the garland in bolly's neck as soon as he was about to come bolly struck her hand and threw the uh, push the garland away into the fire she got up and threw away the veil now she got up and threw the veil which is like a cloth covering the face pitaji pitaji in hindi refers to father pitaji said bolly in a clear loud voice and her father mother sisters brothers relations and neighbors were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest stammer her so pitaji she said and she uh, got up and and everybody was surprised to hear her speak without any stammer pitaji take back your money i am not going to marry this man she says i am not going to marry this man ramlal was thunderstruck he also could not believe it, it was like a shock for him the guests began to whisper so shameless so ugly so shameless now the guests are like you know they could not believe that a girl could speak and you know get away with her marriage she is stopping her own marriage they thought they boli are you crazy shouted ramlal he was like he could not believe it was like shock for him you know are you crazy now finally i made arrangements to give 5000 rupees and here you are throwing off your own marriage you want to disgrace your family have you have some regard for her izzat so she says you are disgracing her family you are humiliating her family have some regard to her izzat izzat refer to respect have some respect to us and our family for the sake of your izzat said boli it's only for the sake of your izzat for your own respect that i was willing to marry this lame old man but i will not have such a mean greedy contempt contemptible coward as my husband i won't i won't i won't the boli is like throwing words at him i was ready to marry marry papa only because of your respect only because of your izzat but i was marrying to willing to marry him this lame old man he's a limping man old man but still i was it was okay to marry him but now i find him to be very mean greedy coward he doesn't have any backbone on his own so i don't want to marry that's what she said what a shameless girl we all thought she was a harmless dumb cow now everybody is like you know what a shameless girl you are we thought you are a dumb cow Bolly turned violently on the old man. Yes, Auntie, you are right. You all thought I was a dumb, driven cow. That's why you wanted me, wanted to hand over me to this heartless creature. But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool, is speaking. Do you want to hear more? So probably an old lady had said, "What a shameless girl!" We all thought she was harmless, dumb cow. Now Bolly is. putting fire she's just firing out saying yes aunty all this while i was dumb driven cow that's why you were trying to hand over me to heartless creature but now the dumb cow is uh, the stammering fool is speaking do, do you want to hear more that's what boli spoke out bishambar nath the grocer started to go back with his party now he is very upset he knows he was a limping guy limping fellow and old enough and so he left he felt it as a big insult and left the confused bandsmen thought this was the end of the ceremony and stuck up a closing song the confused bandsmen they were confused whether marriage happened didn't happen when groom was going back they thought the wedding ceremony is over so 
they are doing a closing music. Ramlal stood rooted to the crown. His head bowed low with the weight of the grief and shame. So Ramlal was very upset that the wedding didn't happen and his girl had stopped the wedding uh, in spite of giving 5,000 rupees. And so he was very sad and full of shame. The flames of the sacred fire slowly died down. So the fire that they put for the wedding, it got extinguished. Everyone was gone. Ramlal turned to Boli and said, But what about you? No one will ever marry you now. What shall we do with you? Now, Ramlal says, you know, hereafter nobody will marry you. Definitely nobody is going to come to marry you. What will you do now in your life? And Suleika said in a voice that was calm and steady, don't you worry, Pitaji. In your old age, I will serve you and mother and I will teach in the same school where I learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? And now Suleika says, No, don't worry, Pitaji. Don't worry, father. In your old age, I will take care of you. I will serve you and mother and I will teach you in the same school where I had learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? The teacher had all along stood in a corner watching the drama. Yes, Boli, of course, she replied. So now she said, Boli, it was very, it's very touching story when she says, you know, it's okay, Papa, I'll take care of you and your mother and mother in the old age and I'll serve in the same school where I studied, isn't it? She looked at the map and her teacher was also present all along. Yes, Boli, the teacher said. And in her smiling eyes was a light of deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece. So the teacher is very, very contented and very happy that she was able to change the life of her girl. So she has this shows how much the teacher has influenced Boli or Suleka very much that uh, it had left a deep influence in her. That, you know, she wants to take care of her parents as well as work in the same school that had changed her so much. It's a very touching uh, masterpiece written by K.A. Abbas. It speaks about girls' sufferings, sufferings that the girls undergo and um, how education can help overcome all these troubles in their life and help to lead a wonderful life. Thanks for watching. And I'll make another video for question and answer session of this chapter. Thank you very much. And please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.